Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today it is March 29, Sunday. It is the um, 18th day in isolation now. We are rounding up a good 500 people hospitalized, 100 plus in intensive care, and sub 100 dead yet. And we are still three weeks from the predicted top here in Denmark. Um, a good two weeks ago, I talked about the IDPTs I had, so the large 600 and 800 amp bricks. So today we're taking a look at my salvaged um, IDPT bricks from different teardown videos. And that is primarily 50 to 300 amp bricks. So let's take a look at that. This is a collection of used IDPT bricks and modules. Now, there's a good range from 50 amp up to 200 amp. I do not include my biggest ITPT bricks. We saw them in the first video about ITPT bricks, where I had my 600, 800 amp modules and also some 300 amp modules. Now, if we start out at the um, small end here, we have a uh, 50 amp, 1200 volt uh, DC. And the uh, naming convention of IDPT bricks is luckily pretty standard uh, between the manufacturers. That they have some uh, standard name. One or two at front uh, could um, be the amount of uh, diodes you have or dies you have inside, so this would be a half bridge brick. The 50 indicates 50 amp uh, in continuous current, and the 120 is 1200 volts. So you will normally see 60 for 600 volt devices. So this is a pretty, pretty standard packet size uh, of the older type for a 50 amp um, IDPT brick. Then there is um, another 50 amp of the more modern type and 75 amp uh, from uh, OIPAC. And we can see that the packet type from this 50 um, amp and 75 amp, when we look at the Semicron and the OIPAC, that they are identical. Now these are single um, IDPT modules with a built-in diode that you can put in yeah, either series or parallel. The next step up in the brick size comes uh, from I think 100 amp and up. You will see these uh, slightly larger modules a little uh, more width on them. Now these are uh, half bridge br bricks rated for 150 amps at 120 uh, 1200 volt DC. And the same package type is used for the um, single die switches here or the double. And these are, as we can see, only 600 volt, volt DC modules but 200 amps. Pretty standard um, IDPT brick to find in UPS systems. Some uh, welders, whereas the smaller ones, of course, come from some smaller systems, mostly uh, variable frequency drives. The bigger ones comes from the large X-ray generators I have taken apart. Some of it from uh, large UPS systems as well. And that is the next standard size brick. When, once we start moving up into 200 to 400 amps, we will see this brick size. Again, we can see it's uh, somewhat bigger than the previous. These comes in all kinds of configurations and do not just have the terminals on the middle. You can get them straight down to the side. Some with a little more distribution around. But this is a CM200 brick. Now this is called CM224. Now the 24 is 1200 volt uh, DC in uh, Mitsubishi language. And here you will see 12 is 600 volt. So there is a little bit of difference in the naming convention that you will have to be uh, careful about when just picking up an IDPG brick. The Semicron packages here. Some nice SKM 200, GP 125, DM5. 
Now it's a, a bit slow and old uh, model, the 125. You would really like to get the 128 models if you want some really fast switching devices. But I have a good 12 pieces of this uh, IDPT brick, so that's that's a good uh, lot to have. Now we get over here to some of the real old and first second generation IDPT bricks, a Toshiba MG100 Q2YS44. This is a 100 amp 1200 volt DC brick. And as we can see, it's only rated for 100 amps, but it's the same package size as the 2 to 400 amp uh, modern versions. This is a very slow brick. We are talking in microseconds instead of nanoseconds in switching speeds. And I have uh, another Toshiba here. It's a MG200 N1 US1. Now, this is not an IDPT brick. This is a old school transistor, power transistor brick. And you cannot really see the difference without looking up the datasheet. It's uh, still uh, named emitter and collector, but you can be lucky that the gate is named with a B for base instead, as it would be for a transistor. But on this ITPT module, it's actually marked B2X and B1X for the gates. So yeah, it's not quite uh, easy to, uh, to tell them from each other without looking up the uh, datasheet. But these are rather slow, I don't think I will ever get them to get to use them. Maybe um, some of the plans I have for, for some of these is uh, simply do uh, destructive testing. To put up a LC circuit and simply test them at how high frequency and how high a peak current I can push through them before they simply disintegrate and explode. A kind of very rough exploration test into what can you abuse these uh, ITPT modules for in a dual resonant solid state Tesla coil. Now moving over to some of the bricks I do not fancy that much is something like the Semicron Skeep modules. As you can see these are press fed modules. So you simply have these mounted up against the heatsink with this pressure plate on the other side of the PCB. And it will have to go through here and then the pressure points here will push down on your PCB to make contacts with the different uh, places here and it just it has gates spread all over the place and the emitter and collector is also kind of distributed uh, a little weird so pretty bad to re to actually reuse this in another design because either you would just solder something on to these or designing a new PCB that actually fits this yeah who bothers another thing that's uh, a little um, irritating is uh, three-faced bricks this is a uh, six diode 15 amp 1200 volt DC IDPT module. So inside here you have three half bridges sitting in a uh, three phased full bridge configuration. And what I imagine I could use these for as uh, this has no internal protection unit, uh, this just have gate drives and then the input and output, uh, the DC bus input and three outputs is to actually use all these in uh, parallel. Um, so you just, yeah, look at this as a 150 amp brick instead. Or maybe 100 amp, you can't always just uh, double up when paralleling uh, IDPTs, but here we have them so close on the same die and the same heat sink that any temperature difference, well, there shouldn't be any. So current uh, conduction and the losses should be the same for all the dies inside of this module. And some other modules here, uh, 25 amp modules, 1200 volt um, DC, almost the same size. You can see it has the gate connections, uh, the three outputs and the DC bus input over here. Also has a little diagram of the uh, internal connections and here we can see it is a three-phased full bridge. Again, same use as the others. I do not find so many uh, isotop uh, IDPT bricks. I just had this uh, single one in my box. So they were a rare breed uh, that was not so popular, I think. 
it was more used uh, in power transistors and diodes than IGBTs and MOSFETs. So pretty rare I see those. And then we have all the TO247 um, packages and smaller here. Now this is all Schottky diodes, diodes and IDPTs, MOSFETs, TVS, all kinds of stuff. Uh, stuff I have uh, desoldered as well. Yeah, it's worth saving, but I honestly I have stopped uh, desoldering these. Uh, I have more than enough, and I don't really get to use them. So they just sit in the bin somewhere. It is much more interesting to use these nice big bricks that do cost a lot of money if you want to buy these from new and even surplus you have to be lucky to find them cheap on ebay this you can still buy pretty cheap from new if you want it so i hope you enjoyed this little talk about different sized igpt modules that you can find in industrial stuff so until next time see ya